Turn now to the whole question of quangos. How many do we actually have? How much do they cost the taxpayer? How many have been abolished since the government first promised that it would streamline these agencies? Might any changes be too costly in terms of the disruption that that would cause? Well, there's several questions that we asked uh, Philip Boucher Hayes to take a look at. And first, um, he dealt with that issue of exactly how many quangos we have. There follows a national address by Antishach Endekenny, TD. The amazing thing, Mary, is that nobody actually really knows. We haven't been able to keep account of the way that the quangos have been proliferating. They have been growing so fast. The think tank task estimated a few years ago that there were 832 of them and that they had a combined budget of 13 billion euro and employed some 17,000 people between them. Good evening. Tonight I'm taking the opportunity to speak to you directly and the challenge we face as a community, as an economy and as a country. It should be said that many of these agencies have compelling reasons for existing and do actually do a very good job. But it would also have to be noted that there were pretty compelling political reasons for creating them in the first place. They are, of course, very useful. Flack catchers, because politicians, as we see day in, day out, get to point the finger of blame or responsibility at a government agency rather than at their own department. But more importantly than that, I think, they're a very important source of political patrimony. I know this is an exceptional event, but we live in exceptional times. And we face an exceptional challenge. Directly, the individual ministers have it in their power to make over two and a half thousand appointments directly to the boards of these various quangos. Many of the individuals, of course, who take on these jobs will be suitably qualified. But there is also very little doubt in the course of the last 10 years that many of the people appointed to the boards of quangos have been nakedly political appointments. I know this is an exceptional event, but we live in exceptional times and we face an exceptional challenge. Posts. There's no mistake that we saw during the period of the last 10 years. Lots of people like, let's say, trade union officials being appointed to various quango boards and this would undoubtedly have helped grease the wheels of the partnership process. We would also have seen an awful lot of Fianna Fáil supporters being rewarded for their loyalty with similar appointments. It's worthwhile, I think, to remind ourselves of exactly how many appointments individual ministers have gotten to make in this area. The Minister for Health comes out uh, on top here with almost 500 appointments uh, in her gift. The Minister for Justice, who would be able to make appointments to things like prison visiting committees and so on, a notoriously easy way to earn expenses. Uh, the Minister for Justice has 325 appointments in his gift. It's important that you know the truth of the scale of that challenge and how we are addressing it to make 227 appointments. That's an awful lot of jobs for the boys. You used a figure, an estimated figure of 832 quangos. Now back in, in one of the budgets in 2009, the emergency budget I think in, in April of that year, Brian Lenahan said that 41 of the 832 plus quangos were to be abolished. So what progress has been made? Very disappointing progress here. Uh, only 16 of the ones that the minister indicated were up for the chop or up for rationalisation are gone. And there was a little bit of double accounting here on the minister's part because when he made this announcement, many of them were scheduled to already go anyway. So what they have managed to achieve, I suppose you would consider to be um, like picking pretty low hanging fruit from the tree. Any Good evening. Tonight I'm taking the opportunity to speak to you directly on the challenge we face as a community, as an economy and as a country. You've had things like the mergers of the Censorship of Publications Board with the Office of the Film Censor 
or combining of the back office staff of the Equality Authority and the Human Rights Commission hasn't really achieved a huge amount budgetarily and it can't have been too hard to push through in the first place. Well, are they gone gone or are they being subsumed with their full staff complement into other organisations and other quangos? Well, I know this is an exceptional event, but we live in exceptional times and we face an exceptional challenge. Be like uh, the Educational Disadvantage Committee uh, wait for this, uh, its term of office ended in 2005 anyway and it hadn't spent any of its budget in the two years before the minister abolished it. Yet the minister gets to put it in the uh, the column of successes of quangos that have actually gone also one like But, but did it have a staff? Uh, prior to 2005, yes. Since then, no, it hadn't been spending uh, any money. The, the National Adult Learning Council has gone, but... Uh, they last met in 2003 and they hadn't been given any funding since then. The Centre for Early Childhood Development Education was given a three-year mandate uh, in 2005, so that would have run out uh, after 2008. And then where they have actually achieved closures, controversially, like the Combat Poverty Agency, um, as we reported on this programme, because there was a lease on the Combat Poverty Agency's offices that couldn't be broken until the end of 2011, it continues to cost us even though it is gone officially, it continues to cost us €400,000 without us actually getting anything for it. It's important that you know the truth of the scale of that challenge and how we are addressing it. Getting up new quangos. Yeah, as fast as they're rationalising, merging or abolishing, they're actually proposing creating new ones as well. The revised programme for government committed the government to the creation of 17 new quangos. Some replaced existing bodies like the Protection Review Tribunal replaces the Refugee Appeals Tribunal. But then you have some entirely new ones like uh, the Forum on Female Participation in Sport. Or there's another one I thought was quite interesting, was the National Monitoring Committee to protect the linguistic identity of the Gaeltacht, which is what you would have thought that uh, the Department of Community Equality and Gaeltacht Affairs should have been doing in the first place. But no, we need a forum on it. All right, but we have a roadmap. We have a roadmap for the abolition of Quangos. Uh, it was designed by Colin McCarthy and his board SNP. Uh, so... Come the next budget, and we know we're heading off into a four-year plan, are we going to see greater emphasis on abolishing or subsuming quangos in some way? Uh, we're already hearing an awful lot of talk very similar to the talk that we heard back in 2008 when quangos were being targeted by the government and talk like we heard in the Minister's Emergency Budget of April 2009. You have a Junior Minister for Labour Affairs, Dara Kaliri, who's been saying very recently that the future of the quangos is on the table but didn't actually commit himself to very much uh, specifics. No doubt a few will be targeted uh, in the budget. But there's an awful lot, as you suggest, in the roadmap that has already been pointed out to them that they could do that they haven't done. Uh, on board, Snip Nua made 33 suggested rationalisations which have been largely, largely ignored. Uh, Fine Gael's Leo Varadkar suggests that there are 70 which could actually be achieved very quickly mm. and very easily. These are popular targets. They're popular things to chase after. It makes for great headline kind of stuff. And it is often very difficult when a case is made by uh, some of these bodies as to why they should continue to exist to see that, uh, yes, you can cull them uh, instantly, straight away, uh, just wipe the board clean of them. Uh, so it's, it's a thorny one for the government to grasp, but there are savings to be made here. That some of them are run a good deal more efficiently than government departments, but... For the people who are working in them, while their salaries are tied to those of public servants in equivalent grade, they don't very often have public service pensions. So if the quango was to be culled, many, if not all of the people working for the quango would end up being subsumed into a government department. There would be a knock on disruption to public services while all of that happened. And at the end of the day, the pensions bill would end up being a hell of a lot more expensive. So kind of self-defeating.